Good morning and welcome. So glad you can join us this morning. Uh, please join me for a word of opening prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And we know that through Jesus, we are his, through his blood, we are made righteous in your sight. That through his blood, you love us, and through his blood, you accept us as your children. And we thank you for sending your son Jesus to be our friend and our savior. Lord, we, as we worship you this morning, we ask that you will speak to us through your holy word, that you will comfort us, that you will give us peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Holy Spirit is here. He is here indeed, hallelujah. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pulled from the ashes 
Join me for confession and absolution. Father, we come before you saddened and heartbroken by the recent events of hatred and violence. We long for a better world. We confess that we have failed to make this world a better place. We have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us for our selfishness. Give us courage to work with others to make this world a better place. Help us to love others like you do. Upon this, your confession, I have a virtue in my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading is from Exodus, the 19th chapter, beginning at the second verse. <clears throat> After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully, and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and he summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans chapter five, beginning at the sixth verse. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned, to be sure sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. 
no bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest upon it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. So glad you can join us today. Now, one time there were two friends that happened to be out walking their dogs at the same time. Now, they were really good friends, and they happened to run into each other. As they started talking and one subject led to another, they realized that they could not finish their conversation. So one of them suggests, why don't we have lunch together? The other one said, we can't have lunch. The restaurant does not allow us to bring our pets inside. Well, his friend was, he insisted and he says, watch, watch. And so he took his dog and as he approached the restaurant, he closed his eyes and he walked in. Suddenly the manager comes and stops him and he says, we have a no pet policy. I'm sorry, we can't serve you. But the man said, well, I'm blind. This is my guide dog. And so the manager apologized profusely, brought him in and, and set him down at a table. Well, now his friend had been watching this from a distance Five minutes later, he decided to do the same thing. So as he's approaching the, rest, the entrance of the restaurant, he closes his eyes and, and he walks in. The manager comes on and he stops him. And he says, I'm sorry, we have a no pet policy. We can't serve you. The guy said, but I'm blind. This is my guide dog. The manager looked at the guide dog and said, he's only a four pound chihuahua. And then the guy said, are you sure? What? They gave me a chihuahua? All right, good morning. You know, we've, been, we've experienced a lot the last, you know, few weeks, months. Um, we are certainly saddened by all the events. First, it started with uh, COVID-19, where we all had to stay home, the shelter-in-place order. And as we stayed home longer, you start to feel this disconnect from people because we couldn't be around people. Then we had the death of George Floyd, and then came the peaceful protests, the looting, the violence. I'm really shocked. You know, during this time, I, uh, you know, like as all of us do, we have the opportunity to listen to other sermons too, sermons uh, by other pastors. I was really shocked that I came across uh, that the fact that there are still pastors that are preaching about COVID-19, that COVID-19 is God's judgment on America. I was really shocked when I heard that. Friends, if you look at today's readings, especially the Romans reading, you will find that God is not angry at us. In fact, we have a God that forgives. Now, if we continue to read the word, we begin to realize that God is not only not angry with us, Instead, he sent us a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And you know who I'm talking about. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now, God doesn't want us just to know about Jesus, you know, just have knowledge about him. But he wants us to really know him, to grow in our friendship with him and grow in our relationship with Jesus. 
one of the spiritual forefathers named Jonathan Edwards. This is what he said, quote, let it be our first love to enter into an everlasting friendship with Christ that, shall, that never shall be broken. Friends, you and I have a friend. Jesus is a friend that forgives. For any relationship to be strong, the foundation must be forgiveness. If we are all honest about, you know, with ourselves, we know we've all done wrong. From time to time, we still sin. We still do things that disappoint people. We still do things that disappoint ourselves. But we have a friend, his name is Jesus, and he loves us and he forgives us. Now, if you follow the gospel, if you read the gospel, you'll realize that Jesus is a friend to sinners. In fact, he sits down with the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the down and outs of his days. In fact, he invites us to be his friend. In Romans 5, verse 8, Paul wrote, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Let me just unpack this a little bit. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. So God is demonstrating his love. He is pointing his love into action by sending his son Jesus to die for us while we were sinners, while we did not believe in him yet, while we were still his enemies, he demonstrated his love for for us by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. And Paul continues, since we have now been justified by his blood. Did you catch that? The word justified by his blood, through the blood of Jesus, he shed his blood on the cross and through his blood we are justified. That word justified means made right, cleansed, we are made right, cleansed before God. And then notice the last phrase. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We are saved from God's wrath because Jesus paid for us. He, he became the fall guy. He took our place on the cross. He exchanged places with us so that we don't have to experience the judgment of God. We have been washed clean. So my friends, COVID-19 is not God's judgment on America. Instead, we have seen many heroic acts, generous people giving as we unite and fight COVID-19 together. There are many people who are generous out there who are, who are just doing things for people. COVID-19 is not a judgment from God. In fact, we have Jesus, our friend, who forgives. In the Old Testament, there is a practice um, that illustrates this. Now, in the Old Testament, there is a practice by the Jewish people called the Day of Atonement. Now, what happens during the Day of Atonement is that they would bring two lambs uh, before the priests. Now, one of the lambs, the priest would pray over, and he would confess the sins that he, of the entire nation. Symbolically, he would put his hands on that lamb. Those lambs were supposed to be one year old or younger because when a lamb is one year and younger, that's when they are most valuable. The meat is more tender. Um, so he takes that lamb, he prays over it, transfers the sin of the entire nation over that lamb. Someone takes that lamb and walks it out into the wilderness to a place where, where it would not survive. It was an act of taking sin away. So you see here, Jesus is the, is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So by taking the lamb out there, sin has been removed. Then comes the second lamb. 
the second lamb was sacrificed for the sins of the entire nation. And so here you see Jesus not only is the scapegoat, is where we get that word, Jesus also paid for our sins through his suffering and his death. So, so my friends, you and I, we have a friend, his name is Jesus. Jesus forgives. In John 15, verse 3, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. That's what Jesus did. So why are we experiencing so much in, in, our, in America today? Well, it's not the judgment of God, but it has to do with what the Bible calls reaping and sowing. The fact that God has given you and me free will. We have free will. We can exercise our free will. We can do what is good. We can do what is destructive. We have that choice that God gave to us. And in the Bible, there is a principle called reaping and sowing. What we are reaping are, is destruction that was sold in the past. So my friends, we have a Savior that forgives. Jesus is a friend that is with you. We're going through a storm right now. But we have a friend that is with you. Now, storms come in so many different types. Um, when Jesus was with his disciples, he had them get into the boat, and they were going to travel to the Decapolis. And we know by archaeological evidence today, it's a place called Kersey now. But we know it was only a seven-mile tri trip. Okay? So in life today, we have many types of storms. We have economic storms, relational storms, uh, you know, many types of, uh, you know, health-related storms. So Jesus had them get into the boat. Normally, this would take only three hours to get to the other side. Well, Jesus fell asleep. We know that story. And there was a seismic storm that picked up. The boat was being tossed from left to right, up and down. The disciples felt their lives were threatened. They had to wake Jesus up. Jesus asked, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Friends, why are you afraid? Why are you, why are you afraid of the things that are going on today? Why are you afraid? Jesus stood up and he said, be still. Right away, you have to realize there was, there was two storms going on at the time. There's a physical storm. There was an emotional storm going on in the lives of the disciples. As soon as he got up and he said, be still, everything was calm. Sometimes he doesn't calm the storm right away, but he says to you and me, to our heart, he says, be still and know that I'm God. I'm in control. Be still. Know that I am God. In that story, he calmed the physical storm. Everything was calm. We may be going through a storm right now, whatever they may be. He says, be still, my child. Be still and know that I am God. I am with you. So as soon as he said that, it tells us this. When Jesus is in your boat, your boat is unsinkable. He never promised that there won't be storms in life, but he did promise that you will reach your destination. You will get there because Jesus is in your boat. I love the Message Bible, how Eugene Peterson translated Isaiah 43, verses 2 to 7. Let me read this to you. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. How many times have we been over our head and God promises, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. When you're... Because I am God, your personal God, 
I paid a huge price for you. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. So don't be afraid. I am with you. Jesus is a friend that is with you. Finally, Jesus is a friend that gives peace. Now we are living in uncertain times right now, anxious times, but Jesus gives us a remedy and it's called prayer. Now I love what um, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen says. God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Our nation needs healing. We need healing amongst people groups. God promised that if we would humble ourselves before him and pray and seek his face, he will come, he'll heal our land. Philippians 4, 8, St. Paul wrote, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So instead of worrying, pray about it. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has already done for you. As you practice this, supernatural peace will begin to invade your souls. Let me just bring this to a close. Um, there's a man named um, Joseph Scriven, born September 10th, 1819. He was born in Ireland. Now his parents were well off enough to send him to uh, Trinity College in uh, Dublin, Ireland. He graduated with a bachelor's degree. And after receiving his degree, um, he got into a relationship with a young woman, um, fell in love. Uh, they were even, they, are, they were engaged, they had a wedding date. And on the day before the wedding, she was on a horse riding over a bridge. He was on the other side watching her come. The horse threw her over the bridge and she drowned. He was devastated. During his time of sorrow, he decided to you know, travel the world, you know, just go other places, get his mind off of it. Then he ended up in, in uh, Canada. And there he you know, slowly got involved with the community, started tutoring children. It was there that he met a teacher named Elsa. Uh, no, Alicia, it was Alicia. He fell in love with her and wanted to marry her. But again, tragedy struck. She caught pneumonia before their wedding and she died. Who could he turn to during a tough time like that? Who will comfort him of his sorrows? Well, he turned to his friend, Jesus. It was when he turned to Jesus and he studied the word of God, God, he had another mission. So what he did after that was he decided to sell all of his possessions and he dedicated his life to helping the handicapped and also poor people. So if you were alive in those days and you wanted him to help you cut wood, he wouldn't do it for you. He would only do it for the poor. Well, years later, he found out that his mother in Ireland was very sick and dying. Well, he didn't have the money to travel from Canada back all the way to Ireland, and so he decided to write her, his, write her his life story. And so he wrote what a friend we have in Jesus. And when he was asked, he said, the Lord and I together wrote the song. After he wrote it, some of his friends got a copy of it, and he brought it to a music publisher and a guy, uh, a lawyer named Charles uh, Converse, he put it to music, and this is the song that we know today. Let me read you the, uh, just verse one. It goes like this. What a friend we have 
in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, all your sins, all our pains, our sorrow, he bears it all. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. My friends, remember that. Jesus is a friend that forgives. Jesus is a friend that is with you no matter what storms you're going through or storms that you may go through in the future. Jesus is a friend that gives us peace. And we have that privilege. Bring it to him in prayer. Please pray for our nation. Um, please join me for prayer. Father, we continue to lift up our health workers, those who are in the front lines who are still fighting, uh, just caring for those who are infected. Uh, we also pray for healing for our nation, especially between people groups. I pray that there would be meaningful conversation, there would be action taken, um, especially for those in authority, that there would be positive change. Lord, once again, we lift up our church and lift up everything in our nation into your hands, Lord. Give our leaders, politicians, give them wisdom to make wise choices and for the benefit of your people. Lord, most of all, we pray for peace. Thank you for hearing all of our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.